Manga gets cancelled before it gets finished. That's the nature of the medium. Sometimes a story you're really invested in will just stop releasing chapters, and all you can do is take the word of some online otakus that your new favorite story is now dead. Today we're talking about one such story, Build King, a manga from the author of Toriko, Mitsutoshi Shimabakura. A manga that, for better or for worse, I liked, and why it may have been cancelled. Good to be back. Welcome to Manga Mondays, a show where I recommend you cool or interesting manga. I'm your host, V Vlogs, and I'm finally back from my five month long Fujimoto Tatsuki marathon. I am free. It took me like five hours of content on Fire Punch, Chainsaw Man, and all the one shots to get through with the dude. Excited to be here, read some more manga, and recommend you guys some more stuff. I was excited to check out Build Kings because I love Toriko a manga about hunting giant unimaginable beasts in order to eat them and gain their powers or just taste their delicious meat. I originally watched the anime after it had a crossover with One Piece a long time ago, which was pretty goofy. Then I checked out the manga and it was crazy, like the world building, the power scaling, and the monsters were some of like the most insane giant stuff I'd ever seen. My favorite character is probably Knocking Master Jiro. I love like old martial artist characters. This dude is one of the oldest people in the world of Toriko and is like a known unstoppable force. He can effortlessly enter Made in Abyss death pits just carrying a jacket of handmade tools and nothing else. Just one shot KOing primordial beasts, going Master Roshi big man mode for the hell of it to scare off people. Anyways, Build Kings, same author. I come to check it out to find that this series I was really looking forward to reading got cancelled. So what the heck, I go online to see if anyone else is upset and they're all just like dancing on its grave. So I'm like, okay, why? What did it do? I read the latest few chapters, watch some videos on it, and I get it. It seems to be like three reasons, really. One, visually, it's off-putting. I get this, especially in the first chapter, lots of walls of text, lots of little fart jokes and goofy-ass big earlobe main character Tonkachi. His friend Renga is a little more handsome, but he's also like three feet tall, so he looks pretty stupid too. I get that. And then two, it's just boring. When you do read those walls of text, it's just tons of exposition and not a lot of happens. I can see how this gets discounted right away by new readers, but I would say as soon as like chapter three, when you get to see the world, it picks up with them reaching the continent and us getting a glimpse of this world's like crazy architecture. And then three, this series started right after manga Act Age got canceled. And Act Age was a very beloved series I've been hearing about for years, about a young actress who's so good at acting she loses track of reality and kind of falls into this life. Fans seem to agree it's still a great read if you're interested in checking it out, but when its writer was arrested last year for harassing a minor, the main artist decided to end things there and it just kind of got cancelled, which upset a lot of people. Many people believe that the publisher, Shueisha, was the one who ended Act Age, and when Build Kings began it felt like a slap in the face, because the author here, Shima Bakura, was convicted for something similar with a 16 year old in the early 2000s, before hitting it big with Toriko later that decade. So. They cancelled one manga and started another. I'm not here to defend either of these freaks, but that was 20 years ago. I'm just talking about the art here, not the artist. Jump has a lot of manga come and go. I don't think these two are particularly related, and I just want to talk about this manga that's been cancelled anyways. But to go back to those first two points, yes, Shima Bakura has a really big corny art style, but I honestly like it a lot. That style, combined with his imaginative world building, makes for a really fun and memorable set of characters and, well, buildings. It means you can do stupid stuff without it feeling out of place at all. As a longtime One Piece fan, that's something I really appreciate, carefully crafting a world that toes the line between really goofy and stupid and still coherent and consistent. Like for example, we see some bandits wearing these houses that have been built so powerfully as big armor sets to rob travelers on the street. Or if these castles, these build kings, are indestructible god fortresses with their own life forces, big supervillains might wear those like armor sets too and don them like weapons. They've got big hotel trains that travel the earth, they've got little island houses that float along the sea, they've got upside down vampire castles with upside down villains inside of them who flip text bubbles and big heads from all the blood rushing down to their skulls that our main characters need to figure out how to talk to and repair their building without falling off the planet or being labeled a villain. All this stuff is super goofy and fun. Second point, um, is this a little bit boring to read at first? Not in my opinion, because I think it's a really good use of the tropes of shonen in an interesting way, and I was pretty much hooked from the beginning. 
for one, it's a shonen that is about defense instead of offense, which is pretty cool. Who can build the strongest house to defend against anything instead of fight it, and be remembered for all time as a god of defense building instead of attacking or like some fighter. They're all like builders that are part of a, a build, you know? It's groups and not just individual people, which is another shonen thing that happens. Like one guy is the guy instead of like a group of guys. And the author gives a lot of examples of these buildings that these groups of guys have built. And they're crazy. They're these giant fortresses and you're like, oh man, those look nuts. They're like the palaces of the underworld or whatever. And you never think about that, you know? Like who built these giant evil doom palaces for supervillains or like these godly fortresses for the, the super cool good guys. <laughs> And the main character is super strong, which is typical, but he has to learn how to hone that in a way that's unique to this story to be able to use his big OG Dragon Ball power pull as a hammer to like knock nails in or something. Long story short, I thought it had a lot of promise to do some interesting things until the sort of Hunter Hunter exam ripoff arc at the very end, which is where I understood why it got cancelled. In summary, we get introduced to a bunch of fun characters from around the world who are coming to take an exam to get a builder's license. And it's a good excuse to have masters who we'll see later on uh, watching from a distance, like endgame characters. But then they're like, no, you guys, you group of main characters are special. You're going to take a special secret exam. And in this exam, we have to use a colored power system, sort of like Nen from Hunter x Hunter. The sticky magic substance, different colors or different styles of buildings. And they establish a ton of rules and colors and all this stuff. But the rules are stupid, they're like, if you use this stuff it drains your lifespan, but then we see everybody using it anyways, it's like, if you use this one it'll drain five years of your life, and then everybody in the background is using that one. It's like, you guys are like new carpenters, you maybe shouldn't be draining your lifespan or something. And then our like characters start using the color powers, and they're like special colors that weren't in the chart, like gold and magic foil Yu-Gi-Oh card color, and like, I'm flipping back to the previous chapters, like, what did this color mean? And it's just not on the chart. It's just meaningless to me, so it doesn't matter. Like, why do I care? And then some evildoers invade the exam and it gets canceled anyways, so like, okay, whatever. So everything leading up to this exam, like 30 chapters in or whatever, was dope. We saw some cool buildings, some fun characters. I was having a good time. But the author must have known a cancellation was coming because he scrambled to establish a new, unnecessary power system on top of the old one. Um, I hear there's going to be some more information in the final Tonkabon, but like, I don't know, I don't think they could wrap this up any more than they did, so. Overall, I wish it would have just stuck to its early guns and gotten a little bit lighter on the text and carried on. I think its pacing was decent, and I would have liked to see some more of those legendary build kings. I understand why it may have been cancelled now. It was scrambling to establish something it didn't need to, alienating its current audience and failing to get a new one. Oh well, like I said in the beginning, this happens to manga. I liked what I got to read of it. If you like this video, please like the video, and comment, subscribe, tell me about your favorite cancelled manga down below. R.I.P. Kentaro Muyora. Also have a great rest of your day, and uh, peace.